Affinity just announced their newest version and I think this might change design forever. This is it right here. This is Affinity version 3. It's not even called that anymore. It's just Affinity and the reason for that is because it's now free. In this video I'm gonna do a hands-on review of this software so you can take a quick look and see if it might be right for you. But first we need a project. So for this I'm gonna take the thumbnail shot for this video. Are you ready? So we've dropped our thumbnail photo in here. And the first thing that I wanna show you guys is this top little switch panel. So right now you can see it's selected on pixel. So if I switch this to vector, now we're in a vector workspace. If I switch it to layout, we are now in like an InDesign style workspace. So what Affinity has done here is they've combined Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign into one software, which is what everyone has always wanted since the beginning of time. This is all literally one day after Adobe Max's annual conference, which was a disappointing event. And Affinity did this targeted attack, and this is no joke. I seriously think this is going to change design forever. This is Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign completely for free. So the first thing that I typically do when I'm working with a thumbnail like this is I'm gonna edit the photo. So for this, I actually wanna go to this color grading mode. And you can see on the left side here, everything switches to now I have adjustments. Here's some quick adjustments. So I'm gonna do a little quick edit for this thing. Brighten up these shadows, dim the highlights. Now this is not a raw photo. This is like you saw a freeze frame from a video. So I don't have a ton of editing capabilities, but that is normal for me in Nata Reflection on Affinity. Now the next thing that I like to do when I'm in Photoshop is apply a neural filter to correct my lighting. With Affinity, I'm gonna use this Canva AI tool uh, to adjust this portrait lighting. This is something that no other software that I've seen really can do other than Photoshop's neural filter. Let's check this out. Now you're probably wondering, how is this free? What's the catch? This is the catch. So if you want AI tools like generative fill or this portrait lighting, then you have to purchase Canva AI. You have to purchase a Canva premium plan. That cost is about $120 a year. And Adobe Creative Cloud is I think 839? Yeah, Adobe Creative Cloud is $838 a year. So $120 a year versus $838 a year. I'll take the $120 a year. But of course, if you don't care about AI tools like generative fill and uh, generative expand and all of these things, then you can literally go download Affinity today for free, not a sponsor, uh, completely free. Very cool. So let's check out how this works. So if I just move this, I can see <laughs> this is insane. And you know what's crazy about this? If I shrink it, so I like to even out the lighting a little bit. You can tell, it can tell where the depth is, which is really neat. The craziest part about this feature is Adobe literally just announced Project Light Touch yesterday, which is a beta research project that does exactly this that we hope might be implemented in Adobe one day. Affinity, the day after, actually releases a working version of this. Insane. The next thing I like to do with my thumbnails is blur the background. So in Photoshop, I'm typically using their like camera optics settings where they emulate Spoka. Well, now Affinity has that too. Let's check this out. Portrait blur tool. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, this this thing is a little bit buggy. Like this portrait blur is like just not working for me anymore. I'm gonna try closing out the app. I think don't save. Let's try reopening this app again. Considering that it was just released today, I don't wanna pick on it too much for being buggy. There we go, okay. I'll take it. Now I'm gonna zoom in just because this is the art of thumbnails here. So your face has to be nice and big, but you can see I have my Guinness World Record here in the back in this headphone. So I wanna try to get rid of those things. And apparently they have a generative fill tool. So let's test that out for the first time and see what happens. So I'm just gonna select this corner here. And in Photoshop, I just leave it blank. Let's. Let's try that. 
I'm going to be very curious as to how well this works because this is big. I mean, this is huge. This is the reason why people stick with Photoshop right now and Adobe in general is because this generative fill and these AI tools are just unbeatable until maybe today. Or maybe not. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I did not like give it a prompt. Let me type in the prompt remove and try that. Oh God, what is that? It gets very mad at me when I switch back and forth between the tools. We've we've officially kind of frozen it right now. I just, I don't, what is that? What is that? I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here or what. I feel like I'm probably just using the wrong tool for the job. Let's see if they have like a basic spot removal tool. In painting brush tool. Let's see what this is. I think maybe there's more to the story here that I need to look into and figure out. Um, but let's just keep moving on because I'll take this for now. This is pretty good. Let's check out what this filter brush tool is. So it looks like there's a lot of filters like Gaussian blur, things like that. So I might use this filter brush as a way to add a little smooth retouching to my face. Yeah, this is perfect for like a little retouch. I'm curious, so if I wanted to do generative expand, let's try that and see what works. So with generative expand, you can basically expand the image, hit expand, and then it's going to using generative AI fill in the rest, this very popular Photoshop tool. I'm curious to see how well this will work in Affinity. Okay, I see it, it filled up. What is this? Huh. It filled up some of the image. I think it has to be like this. Let's try expanding it like that. I think what it just did is it saw the checkerboard transparent background as part of my image. Small little quirk. Again, this is day one of this app. I have a feeling all of these little quirks will be fleshed out. That looks fantastic. That looks great. And now I'm gonna steal this app icon here. I don't know where else I would get this app icon from. Um, but as you see, as I expand it here, it's looking pretty rough. First thing I want to do is I'm going to try to remove the background from this. Boom, that worked pretty well. But as you can see, it is super blurry. Now there is a feature in Pixelmator Pro, which is my favorite feature of all time. It's called Super Resolution. And I'm really excited that they added that to this as well. So if I click again on the Canva AI stuff here and I click on Super Resolve <laughs> instead of Super Resolution, you can see the before and after here. It's very pixelated and now it's not as pixelated. <laughs> but you can adjust, look at that, you can adjust the intensity of it. So I'm going to turn it all the way up since for this I, I want it to be Super Resolutioned. And that looks way better. And that was an app icon I just pulled off the sidebar. Now, one thing I want to show you real quick is the difference between the vector tab and the pixel tab. So, of course, the pixel tab is the Photoshop tab and the vector tab is the Illustrator tab. And I just want to show you how that works. So if I were to grab the pen tool here and let's say I start making a line, you can see we've got a pen tool, we've got nodes. So I'm looking at it because I want to see if this vector would stay a vector or if it's being treated as a pixel and it is being treated as a pixel it doesn't seem like it's vectorizing at all in here so i wonder if you have to have another artboard that's vector let's try this this is a vector let's see what happens if we switch over to the pixel tab still seems like a vector so i'm not very sure at what point it decides when your canvas is now going to be a pixel-based canvas. Um, but obviously, probably because I dragged in so many images, that's what it's doing on this side. And of course, you do have your InDesign kind of layout here. I'm not a huge InDesign guy, but I used to make booklets in like Illustrator, so I really appreciate that this is in one place now. Um, 
And you can see you have master pages and you've got your pages, which are like your artboards. So they have these things called live filters. And it seems very interesting. I had this idea the other day, but I didn't even flesh it out fully in my mind of a of filters that react to light and shadows and reflections globally on your image. And I think that's what they've done. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Bro, what is this? This is called live lighting. Oh my gosh. And if I move this layer, it's automatically adjusting to lighting like it's in Blender or something. Okay, my impressions of this keep getting better and better the more I'm getting used to how it works. This is literally so much better than Photoshop. Oh my god, this is so much better. Like, this is actually... The scary part is it's actually... It, I think it might be better. Like, it's not like, oh, a good alternative. This is, like, better. Oh my god, this is, like, the best thumbnail I've made in a long time. And it's solely because this, like, live filter is incredible. I'm mind blown. I'm genuinely mind blown. This is my thumbnail. I'm going to go ahead and export this, and then we can mess around a little bit more. But this, this is insane. Yeah, so you can, like, export to Canva. You can export to DWG. Wow, that's interesting. That's like a CAD file. You can export as... There's PSD here, PDF, of course, EPS, SVG, TIFF, GIF. GIF. Let's just go for standard PNG. It didn't ask me like file size or anything like that, which I'm sure I could, but I just did like a quick export button. I feel like this file size is about to be huge. Oh my gosh, I've never seen it lag like this before. Look, I'm, it's moving. I'm not even controlling the mouse. Oh my god. It wasn't actually laggy using it that much. It's just when you start doing intensive tasks, you can tell it's like taking up all of the CPU. Okay, let's try exporting this again. Let's go to advance. Yeah, it's 15,000 pixels. Much better. There is a lot to unpack here. I mean, with all of these different live filter layers, they're really cool. These adjustment layers, you've got geometry and the vector thing, you've got character styles, text styles. I mean, we didn't even unpack anything to do with really the illustrator mode or the InDesign mode uh, because there's just so much. Even this retouching tab I'm on right now, like you can tell there is a lot of tools in here. And 30 days ago, I actually quit my Adobe addiction. So I uninstalled all of my Adobe softwares, completely canceled my subscription, and I've been using these tools on my sidebar, Pixelmator Pro, Photomator, Linearity, Final Cut, Corel Draw. I've been trying all different types of softwares. I made a whole video about it. But, but the problem with all of them is none of them are really quite as comprehensive as Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign are. And this is what everybody's been searching for. This is what people have wanted and needed for so long. And you can bet I'm about to dive in and learn everything there is to know about this new Affinity software. Because this, after 30 minutes of using it, I can tell you, is my new software. Hands down. This is new. This is the new Adobe for me. I wish they had some sort of Lightroom. Hopefully they add a Lightroom tab. But... Oh my god, like it's, it's mind blowing. This is game changing. I really don't know what else to say, but to go try this thing yourself, not sponsored at all. Just I, I'll put a link in the description. It's free. Go download this app and try it and quit your quit your Adobe addiction like me. And one last thing before you go, my name's Grayson. This is Grayson's Graphics. This is a channel for designers, for creatives. And if you're watching this video, you probably like that stuff. So if you don't mind hitting the subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. And also, if you like staying in the loop about updates like Affinity's new announcement or Adobe Max and things like that, I've made a newsletter called The Creative Brief where once a month you get an email on all of the news about design. So you might want to check that out too. Totally free and it's going to be in the link in the description as well. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. This is crazy.